Check out shares of low-cost European airline Ryanair up by 8.5% this morning. Along with its latest earnings announcement this morning, the company is also forecasting a record annual profit. For the first half of its fiscal year, Ryanair said earnings were up nearly 60% from its previous record. It was helped out by higher fares this past summer. And for the first time, the company also says that it's going to start paying investors a regular dividend. Joining us right now is Michael O'Leary. Ryanair Holdings Group CEO, and uh, welcome, my, Michael, and congratulations. Becky, great to be here. Joe and Drew, nice to see you all again. Nice so, fares were up 24% this summer. What happened? This is low capacity? Capacity across Europe is heavily constrained. I mean, Europe at this summer is operating about 92, 93% of pre-COVID capacity. Without Ryanair's growth, that would be probably only 90%. And so people are dying to go traveling again, people, families going back to the beaches of Europe, but there's less seats available. And that's reflected in stronger pricing. Into that mix, we're, we, we, we've added 23% more seats than we had pre-COVID. So we're the only airline really delivering very significant growth. The other airlines, the, the legacy guys are pushing up airfares and is sending more and more people to Ryanair to avail of low fares, great on-time flights. You have been pretty vocal in your criticism of Boeing in the past about not being able to deliver the aircraft that you had ordered. I think you're getting 10 of the Boeing planes by Christmas instead of the 20 that you had been expecting. Yep. Where does that leave you? I mean, it's tough. You know, Boeing are having a lot of production issues. Uh, we're supposed to get 57 aircraft by the end of April. I think we'd be lucky if we get 47, 50 by the end of next June. And we've said to Boeing, we're not taking aircraft after the end of June because... It's too, we're too busy in July and August. But we're working closely with Boeing. Uh, I, a lot of t Dave Calhoun, I think, is doing a good job. But the production challenges with Spirit in Wichita and in Seattle, you know, they've had two years after COVID to get the, sort these production issues out, and they're still challenged. It's very difficult. If you're a big customer of Boeing, we want to take more aircraft. We want to keep growing. Um, but Boeing keep missing these delivery dates. It's very frustrating. I mean, I guess that's the better scenario than the planes you're going to have to take out of service because of the Pratt & Whitney issues that are there. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Pratt & Whitney's, are, uh, again, I think it's going to play to real capacity constraint in Europe next year. Pratt & Whitney's are on the Airbus fleet. Europe is the, you know, the home of air. We're the only significant 737 operator in Europe. And we think a lot of our competitors in Europe next year will be grounding a lot of aircraft up to 10% of their fleets next summer. The backlog in engine repair shops is ginormous. It's going to take the guts of a year to do these engine repairs. And there's simply no fat in that system. So I think there's going to be less uh, seats available in Europe next year, which hopefully will point to another strong year for Ryanair if we can get these 57 extra aircraft for Boeing. You know, it, it's such an interesting situation because you're the low-cost carrier. And here in the States, a lot of low-cost options are feeling the pressure because those, that's the segment of the population that's is starting to get a little more squeezed. That, I, I guess you're immune to that because of the capacity issue that, that keeps all of that at bay? I, I'm, we're not immune to it, Becky, but I think what happens in Europe is you have the Lufthansa's, the BAs, the Air France's are pricing up so aggressively. You know, I mean, Lufthansa's nearly doubled airfares in the German market this year. Germany's only operating at 80 percent of its pre-COVID capacity. They're sending a lot of traffic to Ryanair. We're still expanding strongly, but when we've seen this summer our fares go up 24 percent, but that's 24 percent increase on a much lower airfare mm -hmm. than the kind of airfares that Lufthansa and Alitalian and Air France are, are charging. And we think we'll continue to benefit from that. Even if the consumer is a little bit pinched, which I think they will be over the next year or two in Europe, we think more and more people are going to trade down from these very high airfare, high fare airlines in Europe to flying Ryanair. We're the number one airline in most of the European markets uh, across Europe. We'll carry 184 odd million passengers this year, and we expect to hit 200 million passengers next year. The idea of paying a dividend for the first time, a regular dividend for the first time, why? I mean, one, because we're generating so much uh, for cash. You know, we paid down about $2 billion in debt in the last uh, 12 months. We're able to fund uh, aircraft, our CapEx, out of internally generated cash flow. We've been at this for 33 years today. We sit on $3.5 in cash. And our commitment has always been to shareholders, if we have spare cash, unlike other airlines who waste it doing M&A or doing stupid things, we'll give it back to shareholders. We've returned about $7 billion to shareholders in share special dividends and buybacks over the last uh, 15 years. And we're starting that again now as we emerge out of COVID and hopefully a little bit more um, predictable earnings for the next couple of years. What have higher oil prices meant? I mean, they've meant higher airfares in the short term. We've been very good at hedging. You know, we're fully hedged out to March at about $89 a barrel, so we're well below uh, market rates. We're 50% hedged uh, into March 25 at about $79 a barrel. So, 
you know, we use a strong balance sheet to hedge and we pass on those hedge savings to our customers in the form of lower airfares. What, what, would oh. go ahead, go ahead. what would cause you to say, I'm going to Airbus? Forget this. I, I'm going to go Airbus. I'm going to go Airbus. I'm going to the day that. Airbus, Joe, the day Airbus come in 5% cheaper and Boeing will be, gone, will be speaking French. <laughs> uh, thankfully. It's, it's, it, it'd be, wouldn't it be kind of patriotic to go EU with, with Airbus or something? Um, or? Actually, funnily enough, I mean, you know, our passengers when they're booking flights don't worry too much about the patriotism. They just want to know who's got the cheapest but you could play along with, the, I mean, it'd be nice. You're, you're all in this together. I it? disagree. It'd be much nicer if I have all 737s. <laughs> I mean, I want to be a Boeing customer in Europe. I'm the only Boeing customer, uh, sir, on the narrowbody fleet in Europe. There's a real cost saving for us, and that is all the other airlines are operating Airbus. They're all pinching each other's pilots. Actually, it's much harder to pinch Ryanair 737 pilots because you just got to spend six months retraining them onto an Airbus. So it's better for us to work with Boeing. Boeing need to have a big champion. I'm not Europe. trying to talk you into it. No, 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 you can't. I'd much rather but, have you buy hey, Boeing. If Airbus come in 5% cheaper than Boeing per seat, we'll be buying Airbus. At the moment, though, we have 650 you aircraft. You think they're watching? I don't think so. I mean, they, they're convinced that well, no matter what they offer us, we'll show it to Boeing, which they're dead right, we would. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we, we, I don't think they're watching. As I kept saying, well, then give me something that's 30% cheaper than Boeing, we'll show it to Boeing. You know? uh, but look, we're, we've been committed to Boeing now for 30 years. I can get you a Russian airliner for 10% cheaper. Yeah, no, I wouldn't even take I wouldn't. If it was free, I wouldn't take a Russian aircraft. Thanks very much. <laughs> you? Uh, Boeing build great aircraft. They do have production challenges, but I'm confident with, uh, under Dave Calhoun, they'll sort them out in the next 12, 18 months. You